Have a company you'd like Matt to feature on the School Zone podcast? Have a fundraising question you'd love to get answered? Send a voice message to Matt. We would love to hear from you. Visit SchoolZonePodcast.com and click on the Ask Matt a Question button on the bottom right of the page. Simply record, listen, and send. It's that easy. Ask Matt a Question on SchoolZonePodcast.com. This interview was recorded live at the 2016 Texas PTA Conference in San Antonio, Texas. Now, here's Matt. Hey, hey, School Zone Podcast listeners, Matt coming at you from San Antonio, Texas. We are at the launch Texas PTA Summer Leadership Seminar, and I have none other than Amanda Lewis here today, world's finest chocolate out of the Fort Worth area. Amanda, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's so pleasure. you having fun so far? I really am. I really am. So I've got I've got to paint the picture, guys. She came up yesterday walking down the aisle with this tray, and she's dressed like a chocolate bar. So immediately she's getting everybody's attention by the way she's dressed. But then, of course, she's giving away free chocolate as well. So, I mean, you know, everything else stopped as she walked down the aisle as, uh, as people were we're checking out what she was about and what what she had to offer. So, Amanda, give a little backstory about you and and tell us why you're here. How I ended up in a chocolate bar costume. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, so we are here today promoting World Finest Chocolate. A lot of the distributors for Texas are here um, to get in contact with PTAs and get our message out about uh, how easy it is to fundraise with us and all of the success that we've had with Texas schools. World's Finest Chocolate is over 60 years old, almost 70 years old. It's been around, everybody recognizes it. Over the 60 years, they have raised, I believe, $40 billion for schools. So that is no small amount. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. So how did how did you get involved? Because your mom and dad got started, right, mm-hmm. in the Fort Worth area? Yes. My dad, Chuck, he started that area. There was no rep in that area, so he completely grew that territory. We are now number two in the entire business. So it's been a labor of love over 30 years for him. He brought my mom on when they married, and he brought me and my sister on. I've been there for seven years now. And it's been a really fun ride and a family affair. It's been great. So did when you were growing up, did you kind of always think that you were going to be involved in the family business? Or how did all that come about? No. Little Amanda did not think, you know what, I'm going to be you know, talking in front of schools in a giant chocolate bar costume that really didn't (laughs) cross my mind, but it could not fit more perfectly into my life. So I really am grateful. Awesome. Yeah. And I get to work with my family and luckily we're very simpatico. So that is a true blessing. So your sister's involved also, right? Mm -hmm. And she came from education. What was she doing? So did my mother. My mother was a principal, which is how she met came in to give a presentation. And Chuck such. came in and was selling chocolate. Yes. yes, the world's finest man is what they called him when he would come <laughs> by with chocolate. And then the rest is history. She retired, quote air quotes, and then uh, from being a principal for many, many years in education. My sister was a, a music teacher as well, background in education. I have a background in finance. Never crossed my mind to be a salesperson, but anyway, here we are, and it's been a very fun ride. So did you and your sister draw straws to see who was going to be the chocolate person or I mean is that just your personality? No, believe or? it or not this is my brainchild. Okay I awesome. had this made yeah so it, to paint the picture of podcasters I mean it's exactly what it sounds like it sounds like a giant chocolate bar and um, luckily I have very little self-respect so I have no <laughs> problem like dancing around in this but um, it does get it it's nonverbal communication that you can see from across the room. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the way I saw her initially yesterday down the aisle halfway. <laughs> so anyway, very, very cool. So how big an area do you guys work? And, and let's dive in a little bit to the school side of things and, sure. and some of the specifics about what you guys do, how you do it, sure. who the best potential 
clients are mm-hmm. that you work with, that type of thing? Okay, so our area that is our territory for my family is about 3 million people. And the people who are our customers, it's, it's all over the place. So yes, we work with elementary schools, we do school-wide sales. We do small groups within elementary schools, middle school, high school. So all of education we cover. We do work with also some you know, sororities and fraternities in college. We work with churches. We work with individual families who are like trying to go to a family reunion or need to come up with the money for fees for their kids. We help people facilitate to get the things done that they need to that they wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So it is very rewarding to see, to go to uh, an elementary school and see the marquee that they were able to afford because of the hard work that they did and we facilitate it. It is great to go see a playground, you know, or um, technology that's been added that wasn't in the budget. You know, that's very rewarding. So the schools usually use you guys as more of an event type thing or do they use you as okay we're doing the the spirit card every friday and we're going to have chocolate available i know the program can be used in a number of ways yeah it's it's only limited to your creative problem solving basically but what we specialize in is school-wide sales where the entire it's open to the entire population and it you know based on basically the impulse control of the pop of the general population. So we give them a, a case. Everybody knows World's Finest Chocolate. You see that case across the room, you say, yes, right. my coworker has it. I'm definitely going over there and spending $2. $2 is nothing. Everybody right. has $2 in their jeans, right? And it makes people feel good to be able to give to a kid to help out with the school. It's not a huge commitment, but it still makes people, gives that people that reward and also who love who doesn't love chocolate there's a very small percentage of people in the human race that don't like chocolate everybody loves it so it's a win-win you know it's funny or or neat i guess is, is a better word we um i'm on the board of directors of an organization called kids across cultures um we're about an hour and a half so- south of fort worth in the stephenville area mm-hmm. and what we do is we provide a clean water to families, primarily in Southwest Asia mm-hmm. and in, in Southwest China, um, who have never had clean water before. And so we went to our group of kids and we're sharing with them what we were wanting to do. And we challenged them to raise some money for a couple of water filters. Mm-hmm. The filters cost $75. We thought, man, wouldn't it be awesome if the kids you know, got we're able to raise enough money for five filters. Mm -hmm. We didn't tell them how to do it. We just shared with them the need. And because I had been there and and, uh, uh, Scott Hooper, the other guy who's part of our team had been there as well, we were able to share pictures and stories and some video. Well, then these kids started getting creative. And some of them, you know, sold sold, uh, baked goods outside the local gas station or whatever. But one of the kids got some cases Mm -hmm. of your chocolate and started selling them, mm-hmm. and he himself, Smart kid. he himself raised enough money for seven filters. Oh my gosh! One kid, fifth grade, I think, mm-hmm. he did it all. Mom and dad gave him the seed money to be able to buy the chocolate, but he did all the rest. And to see the kids get creative like that, mm-hmm. and to figure out how to make a difference mm-hmm. in the lives of those families—that's empowering for a kid. Yeah. 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 That's great. I love that story. Yeah, it's, 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 it was awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, just to see uh, one of the girls decided, you know what, I'm gonna g- I was going to get an iPod mm-hmm. and or an iPad, one of the others. She decided that she wanted to donate her money that she had saved for it. And then her parents were like, well, holy smokes, if she's going to do that, then we'll do it. So they matched her. Mm-hmm. But ev- every one of them came up with their own way of helping and one of one of the kids had had the chocolate idea and and was wildly successful with it that is that's great i love that story thank you for sharing that with me yeah i'm gonna tell tell everybody here i can tell you're a social media butterfly Flitting and flying from side to side, spreading the social information pollen as you go. It's because of your tireless effort that the garden is full of beautiful social flowers like Facebook, Twitter, 
Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, YouTube, Pinterest, Reddit, Tumblr, VK, Flickr, Vine, Meetup, Classmates, and Google+. <sighs> Why don't you fly over and land on the School Zone podcast Facebook page too? Follow us and make us a part of your flower garden. Come on. Where else can you get current and helpful fundraising news for your school? So fly on over, you beautiful social media butterfly, you. So give some more specifics about the financial side of things just briefly sure. you know as far as the cost of the school what what they typically do how sure. much they make okay, you know that yeah. kind of stuff typically so it's we make it really easy for the schools uh, because that's our bread and butter right and um, there's no money up front for schools there's very little risk involved in other words a lot of schools are concerned about that because we take back returns a lot of other companies don't do that we are local so you can have access to real people all the time. Like we've been in you know, the area doing that for 30 years. What is also great about us is that you can have, if you get the communication right, you're on the same page with everybody, and you work our system that we have to make everything organized and incentivized, right? You can ha get your funding for your entire school year, or at least for a semester, in 10 days, 10 school days. Wow. You are done. It's a lot of accounting money, a lot of accounting, like sweaty dollar bills, you know. But it's exciting because money is just coming in during those two weeks, and then you're done, right? Right. Okay. That's awesome. So. What are, uh, what are some of the top sellers? Me, personally, I like, what is it, the chocolate almond? Yes. That's a classic, Th right? That's. Yeah, I mean, so they have added flavors through the years. Chocolate almond is their staple everybody loves that i like the crunch too but uh, i like it all i mean i've had three cavities since i started working <laughs> <laughs> with my family because i eat it so much but there's crunch dark chocolate there's caramel mint uh we have some special stuff like raisins that some people really love but it's not for you know everybody and then pure milk chocolate but probably the almonds chocolate covered almonds and do you guys have any of the raisin here we do. I will oh. totally go get oh. you some. Because when you were growing up, did you ever get the Chunky Bar? Do you know what I'm talking about? No. It's, it was this little candy bar that was about this square, and it was about this thick. Mm -hmm. And it was called the Chunky Bar, and in it was raisins. Mm -hmm. And I used to die for that thing. And then I, there's one place in my town that I know still have has it. It's the hardware store in town. But um, I've got a buddy of mine who, who has an artisanal chocolate place south of Stephenville in a place called Heiko. It's called Wiseman House. And anyway, I had him make me a batch mm -hmm. of something similar, which was, which was good. But, man, if there's something similar out there, yes. uh, I'd be all over I it. I love the chocolate-covered raisins. Oh, yeah. Big time. Oh, man. I... I've just gained about 10 pounds just sitting here talking with you, Amanda. It's worth it. <laughs> it's worth it. And speaking of the process, so we are, there's about, there's less than 10 chocolate companies in the U.S. that manufacture everything in the U.S. It's completely U.S. made. Another cool thing that parallels to my family is that it is a private company owned by one family, and this is the third generation. So Eddie Oppler is currently the head guy for World's Finest Chocolate. And his grandfather started the business, you know, back, I think it's like 67 years ago or something like that. And so the family is still involved. And it feels like a family because there's such low attrition, actually. People are passing it on to their kids, you know, and there's people that have been doing it since the 60s that are still working. Wow. So it's it's like a family. It feels like a family when we're all together. Everybody knows everybody, you know? Right. So So what was it like when you were growing up being in a household full of chocolate and you know, just being in an entrepreneurial household? Did you guys help out a lot? Um, or were you guys too busy doing your own thing? How did all that kind of work? Well, actually, okay, so there was definitely some growing up, but my parent Chuck is actually my stepdad. Okay. So I was already air quotes, an adult 
but gotcha. I definitely they helped to grow me up. Um, so yes, I was around. He's influenced me heavily, and my sister. Awesome. That was very helpful. That was very empowering to see what somebody could do because actually Chuck had dropped out of high school. He is completely self-made. So I'm very proud of him. The world's finest man. Yes. He's completely (laughs) self-made. Cool, cool, cool. So are there any last thoughts or uh, anything that you want to share with the school zone audience, Amanda, about what you guys do, how you do it, contact information, that kind of stuff? Give us a call. I will personally call you if you would like. Our local number is 817-448-0032. But the main number, and they can hook you up with whoever is your representative, is 1-888-821-8452. Again, that's 1-888-821-8452. Or you can go to www.worldsfinestfundraising.com. Let me ask you one other question that just came to mind. Mm -hmm. I know Uncle Sam has kind of cracked down. You know, one of the reasons why our business is is growing very quickly today is because there's certain kind of vending machines that can't be in the schools anymore, Mm -hmm. and that type of thing. How 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 are you guys able to continue to work the program, continue to serve the schools and help them, given that Uncle Sam has decided that sure. You know, some of the food and all that stuff isn't is, mm-hmm. isn't made available to the kids anymore. So how does all that work? So really, it hasn't affected us very much at all because the success of it is the family. So it's the kids getting motivated, saying, "Oh my goodness, I want to go to that game truck party. I want to be the top seller and be principal for a day." You know, so they are jazzed about it. They they get the signature from the parents' permission. They come back, they take the box home. Mom and dad takes it to work. Mom and dad takes it to church. It's gone in a day. Right. They bring the money back. Repeat. So that's the success. It's not the kids selling it to each other in school. That right. would be disruptive. Right. We wouldn't want to support that anyway. So right. it's the family and the community. Very cool. That's the success. Yeah. Awesome. So. Amanda Lewis, thank you very much for taking time. Thank you so um, much. You know, being a chocolate bar, yeah. I hope we gave you a short break from that <laughs> job. And um, hope you guys have a great rest of the day with all these crazy PTA moms running around. It is so fun. I'm going to totally be dancing today. (laughs) Awesome. Well, thanks for coming by and have a great rest of the weekend. Appreciate it. You too. Yeah. Thank you for listening to this interview that was recorded live at the 2016 Texas PTA Conference in San Antonio, Texas. If you enjoyed today's episode, We would be honored if you would leave a five-star rating and review and hit subscribe on your podcast player of choice. Most teachers and administrators not only want their kids to have developed minds, but opportunities to develop creativity, positive human values, and a sense of personal excellence. But your budget doesn't allow for all of it. You need fundraising. At School Spirit Vending, we are helping a growing number of elementary schools fundraise the easy way, and we do all the work. We provide the sticker vending machine, free customized school logo stickers, licensed and non-licensed stickers like NFL and Disney, as well as tons of other fun stickers that are relevant to kids. The best part? School Spirit Vending is free. No upfront expenses for schools at all. A percentage of machine revenue goes directly to the school, PTA, or PTO each month. And did I say customized stickers? Our skilled graphics team can help custom design your school spirit stickers. You just tell us what you want. The only thing you do is provide us a busy hallway or commons area. Oh, and you'll have to find the time to cash a monthly check. It doesn't get any easier than that. 2,000 elementary schools can't be wrong. To see for yourself how easy year-round hassle-free fundraising can be, go to schoolspiritvending.com forward slash schoolzone.